Who wanders into my camp? What is this? You are far too small to be a colossi. So it's true then. The beckoned has come. I once tried to forge peace between the Jotun and the Colossi, but as I did, I became enamored of the simplicity they enjoy. I have taken to living in this old camp to try and enjoy it as I can. The heads of the city's inhabitants are as high in the clouds as the city itself, with their talk of religion and righteous gods. I much prefer to stay closer to the ground and stick to my roots. The Jotun have wronged the Colossi in the past, but the Colossi have a shared history with them. It was right to grant them mercy. They act like they are above everything, but they are mud and dust, like everything else in this world. They just aren't decent enough to admit it. Most find it completely inhospitable, but I find that it is not so difficult if you try a different sort of living. Yes, the plants are unpalatable and the beasts cunning, but you can't expect nature to offer you wine and sweets if all you do is ask. This is my home, but not for much longer. I moved out here to reconnect with my roots, you see. My heritage as a giant race. However, my time on my own has come to an end. I am ready to take the next step and go and live amongst the Jotun of the Teeth of Naros. There are only loose ends that need to be taken care of, but I have sworn off Idilla for all days I have left. Karunk was my chief concern with me trying to move in with the Jotun. Now that he is dead, it seems to be the perfect time to do this. The logical step is that I must live among the Jotun. Yes, I do. I have lived on my own in this abandoned Jotun camp long enough. Would you? I will reward you for your help. I will not be needing the coin where I am going. I want for my family ring, currently in the hands of my brother Heliodorus and to see my journal delivered to my old comrade, Darius. But, perhaps most of all, I want you to find my wife, Corina. I... I would like you to bring her here to me. You must retrieve my family ring, deliver my journal, and speak with my wife. The ring is currently in the possession of my rather odious brother, Heliodorus, in Idilla. I doubt he will surrender it kindly. He hides it in the living quarters of Idilla. You can try liberating the ring yourself or finding a way of dealing with my brother. Convince Karina to come down from the city and see me. If you could bring her here, then I can talk her into living with me and the Jotun. My journal needs to be delivered to my friend, Darius. He is most likely camped out somewhere in the teeth of Naros. Be quick, Beckoned. I must get to the Jotun soon. Stay safe.
hope you find Idilla to your liking. You must be the beckoned. What brings the beckoned to me on this day? Lawbreakers and Idilla do not enjoy the luxury of internment. All lawbreakers are immediately subjected to combat. It may seem severe, but we are a wise people. None have had need to test this punishment. Least of all you, I am sure. If you require supplies, the concourse market provides everything you need. What brings the beckoned to me on this day? Mine is the duty to safeguard the Colossi from any threat. So Sikandra has charged all the guard. The Primos is the leader of our people in prayer and in other matters of life. They are appointed by Athene herself. She is the Primos now. Having served in the guard, I am certain that she will be a just leader. You have seen Histus? I have not heard from him in so long. I was worried something had happened to him. What business has he sent you on? He knows the dangers the teeth of Narus holds. If he wishes to see me, he may do so in the safety of Idilla. Farewell, Beckon. Stay out of trouble. Yes. I hope you have done well. Do you bring news from below? With my brother indisposing himself, it falls to me to keep watch over my family's estate, little though it is. Histis has the nerve to call himself a brother, living in the wilds, acting like a savage? Might as well be a marauder. Look at this place! Why would anyone choose the wilds below over this? My family has done much for this city, so we are given our own private station in these quarters. They serve well enough, but I cannot say they compare to the home we had before we came to these blasted lands. They are the lowest. Colossi without faith, mindless, violent, and forever despairing. My brother? I would hardly consider Histus family anymore. He left that behind when he turned his back on civilization, like one of those marauders. What business has he sent you on, Beckoned? Well, the ring is an heirloom, so to speak, but there is little wisdom in hanging on to such things, should their time be reached. It is in my chest over there. Here is the key. Yes, farewell. Yes? this I expected the beckon would arrive sooner or later greetings I hope you have had some success collecting the artifacts around the teeth of Naros. Be careful with them.
ghost did not see you. Hark! That face! So soft and flush. It is none other. The hero of the festival. The harbinger of joy. The beckoned has come in my hour of need. He was my mentor. I apprenticed as a tragedian under Andronikos. I sharpened his quills, blotted his parchment. And here I am today. I had written a piece for him, the unanswered. Unfinished, but unplayable. It was too bitter. A greater subject for my work I cannot think of. How intricate my people are, with their vulnerabilities and strengths. I was a tragedian before I became the master playwright I am today, studying under Andronikos himself. No one knows more than I do about literature and colossi theater, except perhaps for Master Andronikos, but he is, unfortunately, no longer with us. I despair that he will never see the productions I have written since his passing. Despite all I have accomplished, I feel that I am still working to crawl out from under his shadow. Perhaps with my newest play, The Humbled, I can finally do so. The fine establishment you see here is the Theatre of Andronikos. We tragedians and our loyal audience are the cultural center of Idilla. Questions of ethics, morals, and cultivation are explored through the metaphor of my plays. Entire worlds are created and destroyed on that stage behind me. I'm preparing for a production of my latest masterpiece, The Humbled. With the city in revelry, there is no better time to launch the show. But I have been struggling to cast the performance, and it would be beyond sacrilege for me to do so when you are so close. Please, will you channel your divinity and tell me who Athene would have play my characters? I expected no less from the beckoned. I have narrowed my list of candidates to three performers. They are all of splendid tragedy and quality, but I shall require you to cast them in the proper roles. Their names are Rode, Ariope, and Zotagus. Seek them out, and take this manuscript. It contains all the information you need to cast the play. Farewell. Many greetings, stranger. Beckoned. I have been hoping to speak with you since I heard of all you have done for our people. I have a task for you. One no one else in the city can perform. Faith keeps most of our laws enforced, but I handle the ones not worthy of our God's close care. You will not lay eyes on a greater city in Amalur. It was a beauty on the ground, and is now only more beautiful than it has been raised into the clouds. Would that we could cut ourselves off from it entirely. But though few will call it such, this is our true homeland. We have a plant in this city, the Evan Root. It was brought with the utmost care from our homeland. There was a special tender for the Evanroot, but he has passed. No colossi but the tender or his heir can care for the plant, so tradition dictates. The heir is en route to our city, but the Evanroot will die if it is not tended, and the heir is weeks away. Indeed you are not. No colossi but the heir may complete this ritual. But you are no colossi, are you? I must say, 
There was no greater relief than when I heard the Beckoned was an outsider. Oh, thank the gods. I have been at my wit's end for days trying to devise some way of appeasing all parties. It has not been easy. To water the Ebon Root, you will require spring water from Njorda's font. This water is outside the city, along with the vessel to carry the water. Find this vessel, the Amphora, and fill it with water from the font. Then bring the water to the plant and tend it. It is a ceremonial container and part of the Evanroot ceremony. It is kept near Njorda's font. It is a pure, clean mountain spring, named in honor of the God of Water. It is the only source we can use when tending the Evanroot. It is located in Njorda's font. Find it and fill it with the spring water. Stay alert, Beckon. Uh, I almost did not see you. Hello there, Beckon. Been traveling in the teeth of Naros? I am a mm, diplomat, so to speak. Though they lack our grace, some of the brutes of this place have in them a shred of reason. The marauders were once thinking, feeling colossi. And the Jotun were kin as well. I must try to appeal to their wisdom. Istus is a dear friend of mine, formerly a peer, but as we tried to build ties with the Jotun, well, things turned. With this city still being incomplete, I have found myself more interested in research than the gods. We have been given the light of Athene, but we should share that with as many as we can. The Jotun have old ties to the Colossi, very old ones. We marshaled their strength for the glory of Athene before we came here. We felt ourselves their custodians, but they viewed us as masters, and their resentment only grew from there. We have earned much for our closeness with the gods, but we have a duty to share that connection with all of Amalur. The Teeth of Naros is a very dangerous place. Even those that know the dangers well can still find themselves at its mercy, or lack thereof. This... this is Histus's research? So that must mean he is preparing to go live with the Jotun. I cannot say I completely agree with Histus's methods, but I can respect his intent with his research. Thank you, Beckin. Wish him the best for me. Farewell.
don't see many new faces out here. So you have completed the tasks, but I do not see Corina. Then her choice is made. Well, there is no more putting this off. I must take my leave. Well, the Jotam go with bare feet, so I will as well. Take my sandals, Beckoned. They may be of some use to you. Karina knows I cannot meet in the city. If she truly wishes to see me, she would have come. But this is a true favor. I have made so much progress in my course, and I cannot risk losing it by surrounding myself with the Colossi lifestyle. Now, I must not put this off any longer. I must go on. Thank you, Beckoned. Here is some coin for your help. Stay safe.
It's your fault that I can't pay my tab, you know? I wasn't ever supposed to come back here in the first place. I've spent the last 20 years knowing what fate had in store for me. And then you... Damn it. I thought I had my life figured out. I know. It's just... I wasn't always the man I am now. In my youth, I was quite the warrior. I fought beasts the size of trees, was celebrated by mortals and fey alike. When I was initiated into the Fate Weavers, I thought it was a reward for my good deeds. The first time I saw my own fate, I realized it was nothing but a curse. My own death, of course. But not a hero's death as I had always dreamed. I was going to die alone and unknown. Killed by an Etin and used for stew. It was a terrible end. But I knew it was part of fate's greater plan. Then you came and changed that future. You stole my part in the tapestry. I was at peace with knowing the worst. But what do I do now that there's nothing to know? You're right. My glory days don't have to be over. And as long as I'm around you, I don't know how my story will end. That means I've got to make sure you stay around in one piece. Maybe this old trinket from my youth will help. After all, I don't just owe you my life. I owe you my future. Why, I once tracked the Yeth of Avgrun on a moonless night by smell alone. Fay or not, I could have tracked those Tawatha sober. They've set up in a cavern north of town, complete with some way of scrying your location. That's how they found you so easily. I have a plan, but it'll take the both of us to work. These soldiers were sent out with one purpose. Finding you and making sure you stay dead. Everything else, the well, Arden, Hughes, have all been collateral damage. They're using something big to track you. They call it the Eyes of Tiernock. Smash it, and they won't be following you anymore. The main entrance is heavily guarded and will require a strong attack. The other route is trapped. It'll need a subtler approach. I don't have an answer for that. I can't imagine what about you made Gadflo send his troops across the continent. Good, good. I'll charge in the front and get their attention. You slip in and smash the eyes of Turnock. That way we'll make sure they can't escape to report back to whoever sent them here. Good luck.
This is their escape route. It'll have traps, but few guards. You might be able to use their defenses against them, if you're clever. I'll distract the guards at the front and make sure none of them escape. Thanks for giving an old man another chance. It's good to know I've got a future again. And even better not to know what it is. Whoever that Aelin Shear is, I don't think she's our enemy. If she wanted us dead, she could have killed us while we were weakened. But she's still trouble. Reminds me of a dark elf who left me half-naked and tied to a bar guest once. Now those were the days. The immortals inscribed their knowledge of fate into the living stone. I always thought it was a poetic way of talking about the theater. But there it is. In your hands. Keep it close, child. We'll be attacking their camp from both sides. We can't have any of them escaping to report back. The Crystal War, they've been calling it. Ten years ago, the Winter Fey turned violent and attacked us in force, calling themselves the Tawatha Deon. They say it's their sacred duty to cleanse the mortals from their lands. Naturally, the humans and Alpha who live here aren't so happy with that plan. It's been going back and forth for years. Where there's war, there's soldiers nervous about their fate, and that's where I come in. The mine has a main entrance and an escape tunnel. The main one is heavily guarded, and the escape is heavily trapped. I saw them bringing bar guests down in cages, probably still being trained. Turn the beasts free, and I bet they cause some chaos for you. Gadflo is just some trumped-up fay who started hearing voices, I gather. But a crazy with an army is still a threat, sure enough. The Destiny Stone showed us the tapestry of fate. But your power must have consumed it all. Everything except the wisdom at its core. The Codex of Destiny. The eyes of Tiernach are two immense Prismere mirrors. Long as the Tawatha had them trained on you, they'll find you anywhere. You know where you stand with a gnome. They're always so focused on their work or research or what have you that they've got no time for lies. Shame, they try to stay out of fights. Much as we could use their help in the war, Staying neutral is about the only way they can stay safe. Just go inside and find those scrying mirrors. Don't worry, I'll be coming along to help. Good luck. I'll see you inside.